It's time for Cookies and Crime. This is the case of Richard Speck, one of America's first mass murderers to kill at random. Speck was born in the small city of Monmouth, Illinois in 1941. His father died when he was six, and his new stepfather was the opposite of his clean-cut late father. His stepfather was a traveling salesman with a long criminal record who would drink and verbally abuse him. He dropped out of high school his first year and started slowly turning into his stepfather. Speck held a number of regular jobs and even got married after he impregnated a 15-year-old girl he met at a Texas state fair. He tattooed Born to Raise Hell on his arm and certainly lived up to that phrase. He would be arrested 41 times before the age of 24. His probation officer said, when Speck is drinking, he will fight or threaten anyone. When he's sober or unarmed, he couldn't face down a mouse. Before his mass murder, Speck actually killed a 32-year-old barmaid who worked at a bar he was doing carpentry for. When he was first being questioned, Speck simply skipped town and moved in with his his sister in Chicago, never to be tracked down. Eventually, Speck outstayed his welcome at his sister's and attempted to get a job on a ship with the National Maritime Union. On July 12, 1966, Speck arrived at the ship only to find his position had been given to someone else. So instead, he went on a drinking spree in the neighborhood. Then on July 13th at 11 p.m., Speck broke into the window of a townhouse. It was a dormitory for nine student nurses at the South Chicago Community Hospital. The first door he knocked on was the room of three Filipina exchange students. He herded them into another room where three American students were sleeping. He then tied all six girls' wrists behind their backs with strips of torn bedsheets. One of the American girls told the group to trust him, and maybe if they were calm and quiet, he would would be too. Instead, Speck led them out one by one and stabbed or strangled each of the women to death. While his back was turned, one of the Filipina exchange students rolled underneath the bed. Then two other student nurses came home, and as they were walking into their room, Speck stabbed both of them. Because of this commotion, Speck must have lost count of how many women he tied up, forgetting the girl underneath the bed. She stayed hidden underneath the bed until 6 a.m. for safe measure, hours after Speck had finished his rampage. She then bolted to the nearest window and screamed out, They are all dead. My friends are all dead. Oh God, I'm the only one alive. Even though Speck had fled, he was easily recognized by his tattoo. He admitted himself to the hospital and a doctor had recognized it from a newspaper. It did not take long for the jury to find Speck guilty. His trial was a national sensation. It was one of the first times in 20th century American history that someone had killed so many people at random. Just two years later, Charles Manson would end the 60s decade of love for good. In a video during his imprisonment, you can see Speck wearing silk panties, and he had a female-like chest. He was taking hormone treatments that he had smuggled in. He did this because the other inmates would like it. He basically did this to protect himself from the other inmates and getting murdered because of his crime. Speck died right before his 50th birthday from a heart attack.